Hello, my name is Bridget Jason, and I'm a physical therapist for Massachusetts General Hospital Physical Therapy um, for the Myrie Syndrome Clinic. I see both adults and children with Myrie Syndrome, and I have been seeing patients since 2018 in this clinic. I have no financial or commercial relationships relative to this presentation, and please contact um, a local PT, if you'd like personalized advice, this is just general advice and how our clinic works. Here are our learning objectives. I'd like you to understand the role of PT in annual evaluations and sort of some generalized recommendations for patients with MIRI. I'd like you to learn some common impairments observed during annual MIRI clinic evaluations and learn some common physical therapy interventions utilized in patients with Myrie syndrome. Here are some common Myrie characteristics that I'm sure you are aware of. While everyone with Myrie is slightly different, here are some common characteristics listed by the Myrie Foundation. The highlighted characteristics are ones that physical therapy evaluates, tracks over time, and prescribes exercises for. These are designed to slow progression. With consistent exercising, we see improvements in multiple categories. So what's in a physical therapy evaluation? It's an annual assessment of posture, gait, which is the way you walk, range of motion at various joints, strength, breathing pattern, and aerobic capacity. For our pediatric patients, we also assess overall gross motor development and milestones and discuss school or early intervention services to see where we could maybe help you and what sort of ideas we have that we've seen work that can help the child in their, set, in their current settings. Next, we'll talk about posture and gait. In our experience with My Myri, we have come to recognize some common characteristics of posture and gait included but not limited to rounded shoulders, slightly bent or flexed knees, and a widened base of support. A more typical gait pattern for someone with Myri would be a widened base of support with a decreased heel toe pattern, increased pushing off with the toes, decreased arm swing, and decreased trunk rotation. We commonly also see toe walking due to tightness in the calf muscles and also sometimes in relation to a dual diagnosis of Myri and autism. Range of motion restrictions. In Myri syndrome, we like to keep track of potential motion restrictions so we can provide intervention strategies to improve or keep the restriction from progressing or becoming a functional limitation. We like to do stretching and or bracing before too much tightness occurs. When we're looking at the chest wall movement on the bottom here, we're gonna look at the sternal angle, the xiphoid process and the umbilicus and the difference in inhalation and exhalation. And here's an example of how that's done. So when we're looking at breathing pattern and aerobic capacity, you can see on the right, there's a picture of someone taking a measurement. And on the bottom, you can see a breathing test. Assessment of breathing pattern at rest and with activity is what we're gonna look at. And measurement of rib cage excursion on the right with the person in the purple and then maximum inspiratory pressure device on the bottom. So when we're looking at standardized tests that we like to perform, they're gonna be endurance-based and functional exercise capacity-based. And then in our kids, we like to do, if time permits, the Peabody. Uh, and that is considered the gold standard for gross motor screening. So that will look at everything. When we're looking at strength and gross motor development in our kids, we'll look at overall milestones. 
We will make recommendations based on impairments, but also the impairments, what impairments we see, but also the, chi the child's current therapy services. We'll check out their overall service plans for either through EI or through school and PTOT and speech. And depending on the child's age, we will check things like running, jumping, skipping, standing on one foot, for instance. If there are any restrictions in range of motion, are they affecting their ability to participate and is intervention needed? And also, I think we need to keep in mind as parents of kids with Myri, particularly, like has there been any changes in their functional skills? Has the child no longer able to sit crisscross on the floor? Is the child unable to transfer from floor to stand? easily or without hands. Um, and what we do is we give you the report for home to share with your local providers with all those recommendations. So typically if we're seeing impairments, um, especially based on range of motion restrictions or toe walking, we will often recommend bracing through a local clinic or an orthotist. Um, sometimes we recommend stretching braces at night. I find these to work quite well because um, you can provide a long sustained stretch. Uh, on the bottom corner with the blue, um, you will see that's, a, that's an example of an adult night stretching bra uh, brace. And on the right is an AFO. What it's gonna do is help hold your feet in a good position so that you can constantly stretch and use your muscles in the right way to prevent progression of joint stiffness. And we have seen in the limited number of Myri syndrome patients, we have seen improvements with range of motion and stretching programs and bracing. Some common interventions that we also recommend are breathing exercises. Because stiffness can affect the whole body, we wanna make sure that the rib cage does not get stiff. So doing things like playing with bubbles or pinwheels or blowing up balloons is all good to help prevent further stiffening as an adult. Breathing exercises will help to facilitate chest wall expansion in hopes of delaying rib cage stiffness. A stiff rib cage prevents full lung expansion and results in restrictive lung disease. Muscles of respiration, as well as major muscle groups, can be optimized with regular aerobic activity. If your leg and arm muscles are more fit and are able to extract oxygen from the bloodstream, it demands from your heart and lungs. Aerobic activities, it's so important. You can see on the bottom there, it's so important that you enjoy what you're doing. So you don't have to do bike riding if you don't like it, right? Find something you enjoy and that will help prevent deconditioning. As mentioned previously, make sure that you're looking out for changes in your children or even in yourselves. If you're seeing an increase of toe walking, increased stiffness and in gait, trouble participating in activities that your child was previously able to participate in, pain, change in posture, those are all signs that you should get your child or yourself looked at by a PT. The other thing too is standing with a wider base of support with no more toe out and more crouch is another big reason. Here are some common exercises that are prescribed. I love just playing on the belly, just laying on the belly to help stretch hip flexors. Um, this downward facing dog is also great to stretch all throughout the body. 
Um, but really it's a whole body stretching program. Um, especially when it comes to knees, ankles, trunk, and shoulders, and also the turning up of the wrist seems to be what I see the most. Um, and with joint restrictions often comes trouble balancing and especially more trouble balancing once you get your feet more flat because you're not used to it. You're not used to having your center of mass in that position. So we like stretching hamstrings, knee extension, the calf or the heel cord, trunk and neck, looking at rotation, flexion, extension, side bending, uh, rib cage, as we've discussed. Um, yoga is great for this um, if you like it because um, it's nice, long stretching programs. Swimming is also really great, especially in warm water. Some common questions we hear is, will I or my child make improvement? Um, we've seen improvement um, with consistency in exercise program and or bracing. And the other question I get a lot is, how does my child compare to other children diagnosed with Myri? You know, Myri runs on a spectrum and every kid is different, but I see that, you know, activity level and staying active is the biggest, most important thing to curtail any additional stiffness or to help curb progression. And I think what you should be aware of moving forward is looking for changes and staying active and stretching and making it a regular routine. That's just part of you or your child's life, because that's going to heed the best results. So this, this year we had some questions from the community. One of them was given the tightening and arthritis we see in the joints, what therapies have shown to be the best for individuals with Myri and can stretching ever be harmful? And does it help reduce contractures? So stretching does help reduce contractures. Um, there is a point where stretching can be harmful, but it's very hard to do. Um, if you are stretching past a pain point and it's really hurting and not feeling pulling stretch and you're doing it too aggressively, that's when you could strain the muscle. Um, so that's what you would be aware of for that. When it comes to tightening and arthritis, what therapy shown could be best. So I, I think really it's, it's generalized stretching and active movements, you know, um, like mentioned before yoga, swimming, biking, um, for kids, it's fun to be able to use a big ball and stretch over a ball. Um, and also I find that bracing is really useful, especially long sustained stretching through night bracing. So the second question we have is, has anyone had experience with Myri babies having their feet turned out? They're saying their PT is concerned that the turning out is coming from the ankles and feet, or could it be happening because of something else? Without seeing this, it's sort of hard to recommend. And I'm wondering when we say babies, what we're saying, are we talking about a kid that's ambulatory yet or not, or a baby baby? What I would say is typically if the feet are really turned out, it's oftentimes when you're walking, it's because of a lack of range of motion in the ankles and they have to turn out their feet to compensate. So there's also other conditions that could cause turned out feet. Um, it could be coming from the hips. It could be coming from the tibia with tibial torsion. It, it would just be something that you'd have to look a little more into and see, but the most common reason for turned out feet is hip and ankle restrictions. The last question is about a young child with multiple joint restrictions. And if there are any ideas besides orthoses, stretching um, that can be helpful. So active activities, I, I do believe long sustained night stretching braces, like I mentioned, are helpful and stretching, but in a young child, sometimes that's hard. So 
active activities that they really like to get them to move into the positions of restriction. So if they like, if, you know, if they like throwing a ball, that's great for shoulder elevation and turning out of the arm. If they like, I mean, swimming on, again, is really great for that. Um, if they like swimming, um, like we said, yoga, anything where you're getting them moving through their range of motion, just to help open things up and get them to be able to use their joints in multiple areas. When it comes to hand and finger motion, you could always talk to an occupational therapist. Um, I think that this particular parent mentioned building Legos and Playmobil, and I think those are all really great things. And what you could do is if, they're too hard. The small Legos, you could try some bigger Legos to start like Duplos. You could also try different games that fit their needs currently. And then once they get more motion, you can make the activities harder. Oh, another really great activity is a big ball throwing overhead. Kids always love that. It's hard, so I apologize for jumping back and forth a little bit here. I'm, I'm looking at the question in more detail. Um, the control of the wrists, um, what I would do is probably do lots of playing on hands and knees and um, also anything where they can really, like big painting stuff where they can really turn the wrist up and down would be good, like tape some, paper on a wall and try seeing if you can get them to color the whole thing by turning their wrist up and down, um, paint in on hands and knees. So you're getting the stretch of the wrist, um, all really good activities for the wrist and hand. Well, I hope that that was helpful and I hope that you enjoyed the presentation and I thank you very much. You have a very nice rest of your day.